Okay, folks, moving along. So now I want to start describing the differences between solution chemistry and gas phase chemistry. So we've spent an awful lot of time in this class talking about gases. Um, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on solutions, but there are definitely some noteworthy differences. Okay, so here's a picture that I have of um, how a reaction would proceed in solution. Um, so we've got a reactant A and a reactant B, as note, noted here. Um, and all of these blue molecules represent my solvent. Okay, so we can say each one of those blue molecules is a solvent molecule. And so you'll notice on the picture right away, there's already a challenge with reactions in solution because the A and B have to diffuse through all of those solvent molecules and find each other. Uh, however, something beneficial happens um, because of all those solvent molecules. And that is when A and B finally get into close proximity. Um, and so uh, we call this an encounter pair. You can see that they're actually stabilized by a solvent cage, okay? Um, and so that solvent cage will actually allow them to spend more time kind of flirting and interacting with each other. Um, whereas, um, you know, we've described in gas collisions and reactions, um, they often collide and bounce right off especially um, if they're not colliding in the sweet spot, right? As indicated uh, in this picture right here, okay? So uh, we're gonna put this together using our normal game. We're gonna um, put the mechanism together and say, you know, A and B will first approach each other uh, at some rate constant KD, and they become this encounter pair. So that's where I've put, you know, the dot, dot, dot. Um, and of course, that encounter pair could go right back to the reactants. You know, it is an equilibrium situation. Or that encounter pair, um, if they've interacted with enough time and orientation, then they can go on to form stable product. Okay, so we can put this thing together using um, the steady state approximation. So let's do that. So we can say D product dt okay right so remember i'm using this as p okay um so we know that that's just going to be um let's see here uh k c times i'll just write a b um right it appears as a positive rate okay we know that d a b our encounter pair dt is going to have several uh rates so it's going to be a uh, KD times A times B as a positive rate. And then, of course, with that uh, reverse reaction, that's going to be negative KD prime times the encounter pair AB. Okay. Um, and then it's going to disappear at the rate KC times AB. I was just thinking, I don't know why I used C for this. Sometimes I have no clue why I use the letters that I do, but we're just gonna go for it, okay. Um, and so uh, we'll assume that there's a steady state approximation going on here, okay? And that's a fairly reasonable assumption. Um, and so now I'm just interested in solving for the concentration of the encounter pair. Um, and I'm just gonna skip ahead quickly and do that algebra. Um, and so from there, you know, solve, we get that the concentration of AB um, at any time is going to be KD times A times B all divided by KD prime plus KC. Okay, so well, what are we gonna do with that? Well, just in the same way, Right, we knew that we had this rate of product formation based on this intermediate that we'd be hard pressed to measure. So instead, we can plug that into here uh, and get an expression for the product based on things that we can measure. Um, so when we do all of that, okay, I'm going to put this all together here. 
Um, so now what we end up with is, uh, let's see, a KC times a KD all divided by KD prime plus KC. Um, and you can see now, you know why I'm separating all of those Ks times A times B. Okay, so once again, this is another situation now, right, where we recognize if we were to balance this reaction, um, so it just looks like, you know, A plus B goes to products occurring at rate constant, uh, let's say KRXN. Well, we can see right here, this collection of rate constants, right, rate makes my effective rate constant KRXN. Um, and now the game we want to play is looking at those two rate constants, okay? Um, so moving forward, so let's rewrite those equations here now on this big fresh piece of paper. So dp dt equals k rxn times a times b, where we recognize k rxn uh, was equal to kc times kd all divided by KD prime plus KC, okay? So there's a couple ways that we can approach this now. So if KD prime, which is our reverse reaction, is much, much less than KC, okay? It'd probably help to have the, um, the reactions up here. Let's write that really quick. Okay, encounter pair, and then encounter pair moves on to products. Okay, so that's KD, that's KD prime, and that's KC. All right, so if KD prime is much, much smaller than KC, so in other words, if it's not very likely for those reactants to go back, that encounter pair, right? Or another way of saying it is it's stabilized by the solvent cage, which in most cases it is stabilized by the solvent cage. Um, then what we can do now um, is we can ignore KD prime, okay? And my K, oh, bless me, my KRXN is just going to equal KD. Um, and now this is the reason why we're calling this KD. This is our diffusion limited rate constant, okay? So in other words, if it's not very likely for this thing to go back because the solvent cage has stabilized it, all right? Then my rate determining step is just the amount of time it takes for an A and B to diffuse and find each other, become that encounter pair, and now that solvent cage will keep them locked in place um, such that KC will go really fast, okay? So what if it's the opposite? And we call this a diffusion controlled reaction, okay? Um, so what if KC is much, much less than KD prime, okay? Um, well, then what ends up happening now is um, that we can no longer ignore KD prime, but instead we ignore um, uh, KC, okay? And so now my KRXN is going to equal KC times K d over k d prime which i will re write that as kc times big k where we recognize kd is the forward reaction kd prime is a reverse reaction and so if i write kd over kd prime that's the equilibrium constant and so this is what we call an activation controlled reaction okay and so then in other words, uh, activation controlled reaction. So uh, what's really going on then is we have to look at the activation energy. So um, basically that means that there's a large barrier, right, for this transition state, okay? So this is my A 
B, and I'm going to put the double dagger there. That's what tells us it's a transition state. So if we have this activation controlled reaction, then we might um, hypothesize there's a really large activation energy, um, which is what has significantly slowed down KC.